I remember his 21st birthday. He was doing poetic justice. He wanted a truck. He didn't have a driver's license. And Adrian Gregory went through so many changes to get him this truck and drive it up to him on the set. And how surprised he was that he made it to 21. Um, and I, so often we talked about it and I would tell him, you have got to stop this death thing because he it was like a twin. His body of work shows he could see something, you know. I know he did. When I see that last picture of him taken in the car, and he's looking out the window, and there's absolutely no expression on his face. I knew. I just hope he wasn't afraid. I don't know. Like, he saw it coming. I mean, out of the songs that we, you know, out of, out of a lot of songs that we did, you know, for him, for him to talk about death, 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 death. I mean, he would talk about it all the time. He always thought he was going to die prematurely. He, he gave Layla, you know, a lot of the poetry books. He said, you know, when I'm dead and when I'm gone, you know what I'm saying, hold these and then let everybody know this side of me as well as whatever I've already exposed. And that's pro prophetic type shit, man. God let him know that he only has so much time to make an impact. He was a pre-thinker. Yeah, you wonder how could he make a song, God Bless the Dead, praising Biggie after Biggie died and Pac died first. Because Pac was a thinker like that. He was always plotting. If I die this way, put this out. If I die this way, I want you to put this out. He was thinking and he wanted to cover all those bases. That's game, ain't it? Woo. He was playing to win. He had a plan E, much less a plan B. After attending a Tyson fight in Las Vegas, Tupac, who was sitting in the passenger seat of a black BMW, was shot multiple times. Miraculously, the driver of the car, Suge Knight, escaped serious injury. His daughter could have been sitting there right next to him, you know. He called her and told her that he would see her after, uh, uh, at, later on, because after the fight, they had a fight with the Crip, you know, and he didn't want to jeopardize her. So he must have felt something, too. I cried right then when I heard. It's, you know, anybody who loved him is still affecting him right now, guaranteed. He was obviously with people that didn't love him. He was supposed to have been protected. Whenever you have anybody that goes down without a struggle, without a defensive actions, responsive actions taken, I always question why. My first, my first thought was like, but um, well, when he come out of this one, he really gonna think he's invincible. Tupac was admitted to University Medical Center where he underwent surgery, including the removal of his right lung. I walked in the room to visit him. And he, he was trying to tell me something that always be one of the mysteries in my life. I don't know what he was trying to tell me, but he was trying to tell me something. And he was shaking the whole bed. He was a warrior, you know, to the end. On September 13th, 1996, after six days in critical condition, Tupac Amaru Shakur was pronounced dead. He was only 25. Quincy Jones said if Malcolm X died at 25, he would have been a street hustler named Detroit Red. If Martin Luther King died at 25, he would have been a local Baptist minister who had not yet arrived on the national scene. And if I would have died at 25, I would have been known as a trumpet player and struggling composer, just a sliver of my life potential. Parker was a prophet. He knew things that none of us seen yet and Pac ain't never let me roll with him to pull no gun on no black man cause he's seen a lot of brothers going a lot of sisters going a lot of children going Pac wasn't no gangster I rolled with Pac we came up together Pac was a soldier A private memorial service was held for Tupac on a secluded beach in Malibu. In attendance were close friends and relatives, including his mother, Rafaini Shakur. Some of his ashes were scattered into the sea. We threw all the gifts in the ocean for him, and we threw the chicken wings and the Hennessy and his favorite pictures, jewelry. Everybody brought something. Everybody said a little something. We brought drums and bongos and people spoke and we had fires burning. It was, that was his funeral. You know, could we have done
done something different? Could we have said more? Could we have stood up to the forces? And all of us shoulder some of the responsibility. It just appalls me that nobody has been arrested for those two deaths. You know, it's just been like, it's like a big cloud with a question mark on it. Uh, and you know somebody in Las Vegas and Los Angeles or both know exactly what happened. Just at the oddest time, I just miss him. Just miss being able to holler at him like, dude, you know, I'm going through this problem and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're happy about having successful records with Tupac, producing him and all that, but at the same time, it's like he's not here to enjoy what you're enjoying, you know, while I'm, while I'm alive. And however it went down, with them taking him away, he's still not gone. It still is going to be here for a long time to come, and even if music still wasn't coming from all the albums that's out now, we got enough to, to hold us over for centuries. Pac showed me just be yourself and be true to everything you believe in, and it'll come. Don't come on this album, it'll come on the next album. You no know, matter how bad it may get, just keep going, because you only fail when you give up. He gave me pride. You know, he gave me love. He gave me inspiration. I don't think he realized how great he was. You know, I don't think he fully realized how much people admired him, you know, and thought of him. I always wanted to make a book out of my life, like a fairy tale. Well, raised you know, raised by the Black Panthers and strung out. I see up. We thugging, thugging y'all to the 90s. Peace to my nigga Kato.